Meet Cocovia Memory Plus with some of the most researched plant-based nutrients harnessing the natural compounds within the cocoa bean. To improve memory and brain function in just 8 to 12 weeks, try Cocovia Memory Plus capsules. Order today at cocovia.com. That's C O C O A V I A.com and use coupon code CCV20 to get 20% off your order. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Today, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. DirecTV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. You're listening to Two Chunks and a Hunk, movie musings for mostly everybody. Hello and welcome to Two Chunks and a Hunk. My name's Jordan Wonders, and this week, I'm your hunk. Staccato. A staccato (laughs) hunk. I'm Doge, and you really are quite bright. Despite what people chunk. And I'm Carter and... Caffeine will chunk ya! (laughs) (laughs) His Apple Watch is soaked now. (laughs) (laughs) That was a full bottle. Oh no, at least those things are waterproof. Carter likes to brag about his Apple Watch nonstop. Carter, if there's one thing we know about Apple, about Carter, he's such an Apple guy. I'm, yeah, I've kind of been about Apple since day one, basically. So that's what kind of guy Carter is. Jordan, you're a hunk kind of guy, apparently. It's true. A, a self-described hunk. Would you actually, please tell us why? Actually, no. That's called gaslighting, what Doge just did. I sat down from my Dang. coffee break and was told by my two no, friends. No, if you really think about hunk. it, you're the one that has a problem. Maybe you should examine your own willingness to be the hunk. The lights are very bright. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, I was told today, and I agree, uh, sometimes sometimes we're hunks because of something extraordinary. Sometimes we're hunks because of a sandwich. Sometimes we're hunks. Hang on, say this, <laughs> say this like it's a Jim Gordon monologue from the end of a Dark Knight movie. Sometimes we're hunks because we're extraordinary. Sometimes we're hunks because of a sandwich. Sometimes we're hunks because we simply meet the bar. Yes. yes. Today is one of those days. I'm the hunk because, simply put, I'm the only one who didn't beef it today. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I did anything good. It's that I didn't do much bad. <laughs> <laughs> at, listen, at, at the end of the day, isn't that all you can ask for from yourself? Doge was awakened today uh, to record our podcast by a phone call that he received yep. 10 minutes after we were supposed to begin. Yep. Uh, Carter spent the first 10 minutes of our mini Monday recording, uh, recording to zoom (laughs) instead of actually recording the podcast. Yeah. Instead of to, uh, his DAW of choice. And Jordan did neither of those things. And I did neither of those things. I did both of those things correctly. I, I I woke up on time like a big boy. Jordan didn't snooze his alarm. Press the record record button. button. Um, I, I, I mean, I snoozed it. I snoozed it. I'm not going to say I didn't snooze it. I just did also get up. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the difference. Totally. And so, uh, you know, what makes a hunk? Well, friends, sometimes it's it's just showing up. Wow. Hmm. Maybe that should be a t-shirt for us. Mm. I think so. What makes a hunk? Sometimes it's just showing up. That sometimes feels. Sometimes it's just showing up. Yeah. Let's like try. A really. And, let's try and put into words like. Let's try and call it. Let's let's talk merch. You know, as as right these now, next few live episodes. live <laughs> over the episode. Let's that's just what I'm saying. Like, have a merch as these episodes come, be like, oh, that needs to be a shirt. That's a merch. Mug it. You know? Mug it. Mug it. Put it on a mug. <laughs> yeah. All good options. All good options. What I'd rather talk about, though, um, is the third installment of our Batman series. The one yeah. where uh, the one where Michael Keaton turns into Val Kilmer. Um, the the movie uh, that, that you and I know and love, uh, of course, as 
Batman Forever. Forever. Doge, give me a synopsis so we can start talking. Go, 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 go. Worst named Batman thing of all time. That's pretty yeah. tough. Yeah. Why? Although it does lead to a pretty great callback joke with the uh, credit card in Batman and Robin. <laughs> uh huh. <clears throat> this week's IMDb synopsis is written by Tim McSmithers. Hmm. <laughs> D.A. Harvey Dent is hideously scarred down one side by an acid attack. The result is two personalities and two faces. Ideal qualifications for a politician, you might think. But two faces only policy is vengeance on Batman. He teams up with Edward Nigma, a technical wizard who invents a brain-sucking TV and adopts the alto ego of the Riddler. When you say say it like that, it sounds dumb. Ego? Yeah, they say al- alto ego. Not when alter? you diminish it to a <laughs> yeah to a brain sucking TV, it sounds stupid. <laughs> Tell it it's it really because is. his ego's not like the highest vocal part. It's the second. Uh, yes, alto, alto ego. ego. <laughs> his his ego his ego spends most of the time singing the same note. <laughs> yeah, it's got all the boring harmony. Meanwhile, dot dot dot. In the circus, Dick Grayson witnesses his acrobat family plummet earthwards and get a taste <laughs> for sawdust. Earthwards? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. Is that really in there? In the plummet circus, Plummet earthwards Dick- and get a taste for sawdust. Yep, yep. I think Tim McSmithers didn't write this. He put his pen to the paper and God wrote this. Yeah, God this wrote this beautiful. one. God, God, t- God said, uh, let me take this one. In the circus, Dick Grayson witnesses his acrobat family plummet earthwards and get a taste for sawdust. Two-Face is to blame, (laughs) but Dick (laughs) trades his anger for a rubber suit and becomes Robin. Two bad guys, two good guys, and eight personas. Dang! (laughs) (laughs) We gotta save that. That's such a good synopsis. We need to to see their history. They need to come back. This person needs to be. Yeah, yes. Tim McSmithers... Might have found Eight the personas. exact flavor that we need for for the opening of our show. Oh, it's what perfect. a roller coaster too! Because alto ego, I was like, had uh-oh. me thinking they don't know what uh-oh. they're talking about. And then boy, plummeting earthwards, developing a taste for sawdust. <laughs> Four costumes, eight. Identities? What did he say? What was eight it? Eight egos. Eight, pers- eight personas. Oh, eight personas. Oh, the thing so that we don't good. often talk about is that IMDb is such. So the Wild West, when it there's like no quality control on synopsises. That's the third one on IMDb. Like that's not. Wow. It's not like I got down and dirty into some gritty fan site. That's on IMDb. That so good. They're they're crazy out there. Yeah, it's a wild magic. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Wow. Speaking of, hey, <laughs> woo. I hate to take the transition. Woo, woo, we. I'm gonna super dump. Go, what? go. <laughs> we don't even know who's in this movie. I mean, I'll tell you who's in this movie. Different people. I'll tell you who's in this movie. My super dope. That's why I'm going to do it. Tell me who it is. Tell me who it is. Val Kilmer is <laughs> terrible. Yeah, he's not very good at all. The worst Batman. The worst Bruce. I hate him. It's really bad. I love Val Kilmer um, as yeah. like an actor. He's so bad here. Do you remember him coming up, though, on that list and rank you very much a long time ago of, like, some of the worst people in Hollywood to work with? Yeah. Yes. He reportedly hated his time on this. There there was not a person in this cast. He's pouting. Besides, Isn't he pouting the yeah. whole time, basically? Uh-huh. Yeah. Besides maybe Chris O'Donnell, there's not anybody in this cast who actually liked working with the other folks in this cast. The very famous story of... Of Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey walks into his dressing room, <laughs> and Tommy Lee Jones, this is all reportedly, turns white as a sheet, stands up and gives Jim Carrey a really passive aggressive hug, and says, "Just so you know, I hate you and your movies." And Jim Carrey's like, "What?" Tommy Lee goes, "I just, I cannot sanction your buffoonery." Wow. <laughs> Which is about the most Tommy Lee Jones response. That is exactly the Whoa. fanfic I would write if Tommy Lee Jones met Jim Carrey in my around, dreams. It is two faced. <laughs> yeah, movie. I, I, mean, I cannot sanction your buffoonery. Holy moly! <laughs> hey, real quick, real quick. That's yeah. pretty good, Tommy Lee Jones. I have been practicing that ever since I read that trivia. So th- let's talk about another person. I don't need to say any more about Val Kilmer. He sucks. Uh, he's going through a lot right now, so I'm not going to harp on him. But yeah, um, not my super pump. 
by any means, but can I tell you who I love so much? Yeah. Not Robin, but Chris O'Donnell specifically. Okay. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that he is having the time of his life in these movies. Yes. And he's written terribly. He's acting terribly. I mean, he's not yeah. good. No, he's but so bad. But I, I just want them to, I wish that they made a dozen more so he could keep having fun. <laughs> There was I supposed feel terrible to be. For him. I mean, there was. We were supposed to go all the way into Batman Unchained, which was going to be one I of the know. last Bruce Wayne stories. Unchained. Nightwing, and then a Nightwing movie. I know. Yeah, Man. I just. I feel so bad Poor for Chris. Chris. Poor, Poor Chris. Poor Chris. Poor Chris. He wasn't yet to the era of superhero movies where having your name be Chris guaranteed you a trilogy. Right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I. This, I just love him. So, these two Batman movies. And we'll talk about Batman and Robin tomorrow. But since we're jumping into the, is it uh, Shoemaker? Schumacher? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The Schumacher, uh, Schumacher. attempts here. Um, these are what I remember the most growing up. Honestly, me too. Yeah. Are these two movies. And I'm realizing that with, and we're going to find that this was a, a little bit more different for me because I've had movies before around this age that were actually bad movies, but I would get to the scientific cinema scale and still rate them highly because of the nostalgia. Sure. These are these are just bad. And I think it's because we do get the Dark Knight series kicked off, you know, a decade later. Yeah. Not but even was, after, what, six, six years seven, after? Yeah, six or seven Batman years. Batman and Robin? Yeah. After Batman and Robin. After yeah. Batman Forever, it's like, it's a, decade. It's like it's a, decade. a decade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um. Because these were so, because we also talked about Batman Returns as being cartoony. These are yeah could also be qualified as cartoony, but in a completely different way. That I, I think that's not like the Batman the animated series. It's just like yeah, it's like ABC Family took a shot or like <laughs> I don't know. But these were painted in such a way that I think my perceptions of Batman very early on were that he had a bunch of cool stuff. And it was just kind of campy, which is probably silly, yeah. closer to Adam West than than really what we would get, obviously, in Christopher Nolan. So when the Nolan yeah. movies come around, I I was remembering how kind of jarring the switch was for me. Sure. And yeah. we'll get to talk a lot more about that when we do Batman Begins, because it really is as if Nolan was saying, reset. But yeah, let's try these again. were so bizarre. And these were the last kind of vibes we had before... A Batman movie. I think the right. difference between these and what Nolan did is f- far wider a gap than like going from Toby to Andrew sure. to Tom. Oh yeah, it's it's a justifiable reboot. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. In term in a way that like maybe the Amazing Spider Man wasn't. Since you bring that up, like that's different enough that it's like yeah, you really do have to just do something completely new. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I think I think that's a good word. I I think that when I mean, we've, we've even talked before about. A movie coming out and being like, we just had this, right? Like, what? Why would we be yeah. Re- yeah. rebooting this again? And very rarely, when the vibe matches, is it a worthy reboot? Now, the, I, I would say that the Matt Reeves, the Batman, feels different because the last iteration of Batman uh, was terrible. If we hadn't had Ben Affleck, I would be it feeling would feel that weird. way about about Matt Reeves. It's crazy to me how many times I literally forget that Ben Ben was. Okay, because y'all, I'm like, why would y'all say that? That you're saying the Nolan movies were <laughs> not? Are you serious? I didn't think y'all thought that. Poor Ben, dude. Oh, oh, when we're talking about actors, I we feel, feel bad so for bad in regards for to the Batman franchise. Poor Ben. Let's give Ben Affleck and Chris O'Donnell a Batman, a Batman and Robin, and Robin movie. movie. <laughs> Don't tempt them, man. I'll tell you that. Don't <laughs> tempt WB. They'll get weird with it for They'll sure. They'll do some weird stuff. Chris O'Donnell might actually be older than Ben Affleck. I think Chris O'Donnell's fifty. <laughs> Is he? I think so. Yeah. Wow. I think he's a little older than Ben. I would love to see him come back as Robin. Wow. <laughs> but old Robin. I, yeah. <laughs> so this movie hey, specifically. Honestly, honestly, though, I'm going to be wild on us. If we did a Batman Beyond movie, I would not hate an appearance from old Clooney as old Bruce. We're not on that and, movie yet, but I know old Chris O'Donnell. But I'm just saying, in terms of bringing back boys who've been sure. boys before. Sure. Anyway, sorry. Continue. Yeah. No, I hear. I hear what you're saying. Uh, this one, Batman Forever. Yeah. Yep. 
only barely, but just barely swipes and hits the so bad it's fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, yep. bubble for me it it mm-hmm. it reaches out and its fingers just graze it enough for me to enjoy watching it yeah and part of the reason is jim carrey oh my goodness who the is the jim carreyest he's ever been the jim Besi- carreyest he's ever besides been. ace ventura i think i mean this, this was is, yeah this was yeah. like two or three years after his i think yeah. most successful year an actor has had of all time. He had Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber all came out in the same wow. year. Wow. What a and then, year. And then this is like two or three years later. And, and I think was kind of the next big thing that he did. Yeah. But um, yeah. He's, you know what's funny though? Is, we've already talked about this, but it keeps coming up. The influence of just how crazy Jack went in yes. portraying the Joker. You know, we have that, and then we've got Danny DeVito very clearly doing that. And yeah. honestly, to an extent, Michelle Pfeiffer just being like, you know what? Here's a canvas. Wild. Just yeah. be, sure. go be a 10-year-old again yeah, and do whatever you want. But it really plays into people like Jim Carrey being able to just go and be. You saw that role was was offered to Robin first. Offered yep. to Robin Williams first, and he said no because he was mad they used him as bait to get Jack to take the role mm-hmm. in 89. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And I can't help but think to, you know, it's another three years before that or so when Aladdin came out. It does yeah. feel like were it not for Robin Williams' genie, I wonder how much influence th- this Riddler, this Jim Carrey Riddler would have. Uh, again, it's different because it's not voiced like voicing a cartoon. There was some special yeah. monumental uh, just accolades about what Robin Williams was able to do for an animated film. But just the absolute all over the place doing impersonations of people – Jim Carrey would probably never want to hear this, but it feels like he rips some stuff off of the kind oh, of the, absolutely. the Robin energy. Oh, for but sure. I like them both. Yeah. I don't, it didn't hurt him, I don't think. I say good for Robin for standing his ground, honestly. Like, yeah, WB totally. did him dirty. Yep. <clears throat> but he was a 90s demigod, so he could do whatever he wanted. He should have sure. done anything. So he did Flubber instead. Yeah. Good move, honestly. Different kind of green, but. <laughs> <laughs> the scene where Bruce entices Dick to stick around with like a burger and a motorcycle. Yeah. In a in a in a wine glass of milk? Is, is that right? So yeah. funny. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Is he 13? Is he 25? So Chris O'Donnell <laughs> Chris O'Donnell was 23 when this movie was filmed. And he looks older than I am. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out though what age this and I'm, person I'm is. I'm young and I'm vibrant. I'm like 21. So that makes sense that he looks older than me. Well, I'm trying to figure out what age this person is that he can drive a motorcycle, go off on his own, and fight full-grown men, but yet also needs a legal guardian. That's the thing. Like aging, aging Dick Grayson up maybe doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. In any way. Yeah. What is the age normally of Dick Grayson in the comics? When like he's 14 or 15. Yeah, right. when he's first found by Bruce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is bizarre. The uh the environment of the circus scene, there's so many sets that I remember so vividly. Oh yeah. From from being a kid. And our Gotham looks different in an inherent not not a super bad way. I prefer I still prefer Tim Burton's Gotham I think over yeah. any Gotham we've had. I agree. It's more gothic. Tim Burton's Gotham is more gothic. This is a little more like not industrial but like a neon. Yeah, yeah. it it almost we, feels more like like cartoon metropolis. Super We have metropolis. become full Ouroboros at this point though because the the direction for this movie was let's make it a little more like the animated series. Right. So the serpent is fully eating its own tail at this point. Yeah. And that that becomes obvious, I think, through a lot of things where this movie kind of cannibalizes itself mm-hmm. in so many ways. Like it's kind of a mess. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, kind of. I wouldn't say it's kind of a mess. I would say it's explicitly and dangerously a mess. It's it's nothing except a mess. Did y'all pick up on like it feels like Schumacher has some George Miller influence? Yeah, interesting. Did you pick up on any of that? Some Mad Max vibes about Gotham. Yeah. 
Like having kid crimi- criminals? Yeah. There's kid yeah. criminals all over the place. It's In very Dark Knight kind of Returns. The, the bombastic punks. The bombastic 80s punks is yes. very, very like George Here Miller-y. in the middle of the 90s. <laughs> so. Very George Miller, very Frank Miller. Both Millers. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. He, while, we're, while we're still kind of working our way through characters, I do just want to say it's important to me that, that I get out ahead of this. Um, I don't want people reading this about me. When they Google me, because I'm famous. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like Nicole Kidman's character in this movie. Super Dump is Dr. Dr. Chase Meridian. Okay. It's mine too. Yeah. Mine is specifically the thirstiness. She nasty, oh dude. Dr. Goodness. Chase Meridian. Gracious, Dr. That is nasty. So completely But Joel, Joel nasty too. That's why we get butt shots in every movie. Here's the thing. Here's the thing though. Here's what's, what's uh, not necessarily convincing. That's your super pump. It's no, the no, butts. It no. uh, well, that's funny. Um, Chase Meridian, yeah, in a way, c- could be convicting in terms of you, because it's like the woman is the one who's thirsty and and lusting after certain things, and I, I have to be careful, right? Because there's a history of cinema where that's just men, and yeah. honestly, most of the men For sure. that we've seen to this point and will uh, next week are just, they just have hot girls around. And that's the point. Yep. Sorry, I can't sleep with you. Or yes, I'd love to sleep with you. What flavor? You know, it's just like really derogatory stuff. So I just think there was, there's an unnecessary, there's an unnecessary level to almost all of that. If yeah. not all of that when it comes up. But this was just like, I think it's because it's Nicole Kidman and I know what she's capable, capable of, of doing, as a yeah. character yeah, actor. Absolutely. I'm like she's probably gonna win an Oscar this year for playing Lucille Ball, and she's in 1995. <laughs> she's in Batman. Forever. She just she just wants some of yeah. Batman so bad. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was like they were trying to almost make it clinical. Like she just that's had the thing. A, that's the, like I'm even fine if it's like she has a crush on Batman because she's seen him from afar. That's like that's not great. <coughs> wow, you okay? <laughs> I was trying so hard to hold it in. <laughs> what happened to you? <coughs> I swallowed down my breathing hole instead of my drinking hole. Don't do that one. <laughs> and the I was other like, one. I was sitting and like turning red. I was like, I'm going to let them finish their sentence. I'm going to let them finish their sentence. And then I couldn't <laughs> hold it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great if Dr. Chase Meridian just has a crush on Batman. But I still think that's better than this weird like clinical obsession manifesting as we sports desire with it's just what on kind of gross and what it really felt like was their direction make it more like the animated series was to they took harley quinn to take a breakout star of the animated series invented for the animated series later becoming part of Mm. the comics a lot of people's favorite character in the comics they said, let's have our own version of that but make her obsessed with batman who then wants to date batman instead and we just oh we just have a a Batmanized Harley Quinn relationship where it's a doctor who is studying him who then falls in love with him. Interesting. Never even thought of that. Super dumb. It's gross. It sucks. <clears throat> it is gross. It, it is, is gross. gross. And, I, and I think that <clears throat> one of the differences between what we have there and with like Harley Quinn is uh, Harley Quinn is coerced and manipulated into... Yep. Her sort of like Stockholmy exactly. relationship. It is. It is a. And bad then we root thing. for. And then we root for her <laughs> when she gets away from Joker. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And Chase There's, is just. It, and by the way, I don't like it when it's the guy doing it either. So I'm. It, no. It, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's no, all no. yucky. It's. There are not many, like, through lines narratively in in our Batman series in these different movies, but I will say, they are all keenly aware of each other of the ones that came before because I think yeah. the moment that Michelle Pfeiffer donned one of her 60 sewn together Catwoman cat suits <laughs> vacuum yeah. sealed they were trying to make another you Vita, sex baby. icon they yeah, were trying to right. make a sex icon from right. there on because we'll get Uma in the next one right so it was yeah. always like a, okay can we be so we got to have Batman who's the, the hottie magazine. who's the hottie we got to have a Batman we got to have a silly for him to punch we got to have a sexy for him to be thirsty of yeah. yeah. And a crazy villain. Yep. Oh, man. 
Yeah, I think that probably it's not very much of a stretch to say that sexuality and desire and Wii Sports are really not represented well at all in any of these early Batmans. No. There's just a ton of gross stuff about all of it. Yes. No, and if... Obviously, we'll get to it once we get to the the Nolan Dark Knight trilogy, but Batman having romantic entanglements for Jordan works better when that comes at great cost. Yeah. And when it is not innately like I don't know, I don't want to I don't want to think about Batman being like, "Ooh, Batty going to get some." Like yeah, I would chicks, rather think chicks dig the car. Right. I would rather think yeah. about Batman being like, "I I I love this woman and I'm going to get her killed on accident, so I got to be careful." Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a pretty modern thing because for a lot of, I mean, to these movies credit, and I the last thing I want to do is excuse the kind of nasty uh, sure. uh, dehumanization of women and turning them into just sex objects in these movies. Uh, but to their credit, that was a part of Bruce's character for a while as like Batman is, it's been said to death, Batman is who Bruce really is. Bruce is the mask that he wears. And part of that mask, part of that disguise is, is a womanizer. Yeah. Is a womanizer continually sleeping with models or women from the circus or ballerinas or whatever. But we don't you know have to I mean? focus on that though. We can make that, we can understand. We can, we can say, hey, it's 1995. That sucks. We shouldn't do that. That's not an admirable thing for Bruce to just consistently be a womanizer and dehumanizing to these women. Well, even in even in the Dark Knight trilogy, he works really hard to make sure that Bruce has that uh, reputation to right. further and further distance himself from the Batman persona. Right. Um, and so I think <clears throat> I think that there is lots a lot to be said for that that being a character element of Bruce is not something that I have a problem with so much as it is just like, why are we focusing on it in a yeah. movie? You know, like just so much. I don't know. So I just think it's, it's, just, hard. it's hard to present, hey, this is our admirable hero. And one of his main things is that he's a womanizer. That he nasty. Yeah. no, I Right. Agree. Because we've de-emphasized that with like James Bond. Right. Right. I think that's okay to de-emphasize. Listen here. That's my bold stance for this episode. I. I, Doge, of Two Chunks and a Hunk, mm -hmm. believe it's okay to not to be a womanizer. Dang. Mm -hmm. And I'll die on that hill. I don't know that I'm ready to <laughs> yeah. make a statement like that if I'm being That's okay. With you. That's okay. You stand in your truth. That's mine. I just, women are so obsessed with me. Like, Callie has this problem. Like, yeah. whenever I go out, the people always shout, there goes that hottie. And Callie's like, yeah. Callie's like, please don't leave the house anymore. Like, Please wear like turtlenecks and and beanies pulled down to your chin and cut ho eye holes in them and like yeah. don't don't go out anymore. Yeah, and so it's really tough for me as an accidental like sex symbol. Sorry, we sports yeah. symbol. It's tough. It's because you're vacuum sealed into all your clothes. Yeah. That like is Michelle. part of it. Yeah, every every crevice and cranny. You know. Yeah. How far are we from shot announcements? It's can right I, now. Can I? Oh, I'll super pump as soon as we get back. You take a little shout and you put it in there. You take an announcement and you put it in there. You mix it all up and what do you get? A little shout announcements is what you get. It's shout announcements. I want to give a shout out to us for doing such a good job in this Batman series. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to make it very clear, abundantly clear, that next week will be Batman and Robin with Clorge Juni donning and the dis cowl. And Disocronal. Disocronal. <laughs> and Shalisa Ilverstone. And Thuma Ehrman. Thuma Ehrman. <laughs> and Trinal the Alric and Snader. Nager. Terminator was in there somewhere. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Also, want to give a shout out to Discord user CC Nash. Welcome. We're glad you're in our Discord. We're glad to have you. If you want to hear your name here, it's very easy. Pay us it's very easy. Money. <laughs> it costs money. <laughs> you can support us on Patreon. We have two distinct tiers uh, that you can support us, but we do guarantee that like Johnson & Johnson, those tiers are tier free. <gasps> wow. The first tier is $3 a month, and that gets you access to every bonus episode we've ever recorded. We've got some absolute gems in there, things like a Goofy movie, things like Into the Spider-Verse, Things like Matthew Broderick's Godzilla from 1998. <laughs> yes. Uh, coming soon, we've got Lego Batman as part of this series, which Carter has never seen. Seems to be a trend for our uh, uh, I think bonus he, episodes I, I recently. Would, 
I do think he will yes. probably watch it before we talk about it. That's probably I a good really idea. Hope, I hope that's going to happen. That's my hope. Yeah. Uh, and if that's just not enough for you, five bucks a month gets you all of that plus access to our patrons only Discord channel where we talk about everything. Lately, it's been a lot of bragging about our Wordle scores. I just found out what Wordle is yesterday and I am pretty good at it. So it's a great time Two to days join in. us. Two Chill. days in. It's a great time to join us and we'd love to have you. Uh, there's something special coming up next month and it really doesn't require anything of you in terms of money or anything like that. You just have to listen. You just have to be really attuned with your environment and just be ready for February 22nd of 2022. A lot of twos in there. Wow, what a perfect time for Two Chunks Day, the very first national holiday for Two Chunks and a Hunk. Not the I last. It's the first, the first national holiday. It's very, the very first national holiday. We're, yeah. we're gonna, in the old ways, we're going to celebrate it this year. And there's some things to expect. I don't want to give too much away. But there's a lot of newness coming out around that time. Places that you can go, perhaps at the merch store, perhaps simply just turning on your mini Monday. Things will sound different. You'll have opportunities to contribute to Two Chunks Day. In some a way of that, you that, might. That, some of you might have opportunities there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, it might last longer than that day itself. But all that to say, just, just be ready. Just be prepared. Look down at your glass. You can see that there's some ripples, pretty rhythmic ripples in the glass in your Jeep uh, out in the jungle. And there's something coming. Sleep, there's something, sleep with there's your something shoes on. There's something on the way. Is what we're saying. Check, yeah. check that rear view. Might be closer than it, than it appears. Sleep with your shoes on like you're in midsummer and you don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you're, and you're going to light you on fire. Wait, is that the last one? Shot announcements is over. We're in this weird liminal space between shot announcements yeah. and podcasts. There were. The world between worlds. I, I don't very think we're hear alone. Matt hey, screaming at me, <laughs> Carter. You were saying I need to super pump. You do, and I promise it was not motivated by something that y'all kind of said in a cavalier way sure. in the first half sure. of our podcast. I sure seeing the juicy Batman trunk. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, in this movie, his bat dumper, I think, is what they refer to it as. His bat dumper. The fact that we decided to have a curated, smooth black rubber <clears throat> view of a superhero's butt is completely fascinating to me, and it's my super dump. It is the most. <laughs> it's your super dump. <laughs> Sorry, my super pump. My super pump. I, I meant to. I was thinking like dump trunk, but yeah, dump truck butt. But it's like my super pump because. This is, a, someone has just shown their cards. You clearly do not care about the influence that this hero might have on like, <laughs> right. it is the most thoughtless thing. It is and unbelievably I think it's, tasteless. Yeah. It's the most unbelievably tasteless thing in a just overall tasteless movie. Yeah. You can't call it a franchise if there's only two of them, but it comes back. And it's not my super, it's not my super trunk in the next episode. Nice, it's my sure. super trunk here. My yeah. first and only super trunk, yeah. I think. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's the kind of ridiculous that is like Halle Berry's cat one. Sure. It's like, I yeah, can't believe absolutely. it. But it stands out to me because it does seem to be in my upper echelon of all the dumb things that happened. This one yeah. is far and away. And it's only a second and a half. But I'm like, why on earth? Yeah. No, th- this is this is good, Carter. I'm glad Jiggle, you it jiggles up. a bit, doesn't it? It does jiggle yeah. a bit. Yeah. Uh huh. The camera's not moving. Val is moving. Sure. Unless they got a double. <clears throat> there, yeah, that's, his, that's a butt double. There is a moment in this movie <laughs> where, for mm, no reason at all, we just show Batman sprinting out of a flaming explosion with his cape somehow still billowing behind him. Yeah. Even though mm-hmm. the force of the explosion should be pushing it into sure. his body. Yeah, sure. Sure. That moment that you super pump signifies my super pump, which is how stupid this movie is. I think that Joel Schumacher is talentless. Um I can't believe he has a career. I felt more sorry for him after reading about like yeah. I think he felt regret. But then he did it again afterwards. But for no, no, both no, no. of them, he oh, felt okay. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, felt yeah. that he was pressured so, by the studio to make it more toyetic. Well, and he had wanted to do like Batman 
uh, he wanted to make what, it dark. What's the first one? He wanted to do year one. He, Man, year one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both I times he was you. hired, he was like, I really want to do year one. This sounds like David Ayer talking about how Suicide Squad was going to yeah. be incredible, but WB stepped in and ruined it. Like, don't get me wrong. I got no excess love for WB, but um, I, I don't know. I don't think Joel Schumacher has it. I think he was a bad choice for these Batman movies. I think he's terrible. And um, <laughs> I don't think that the stupidity in this movie is on purpose. Um, yeah. I think that that is what makes it my super pump is that, and, and we'll talk about, we'll talk about the extremes of this next movie for sure. But this movie is so dumb. Yeah. Two-Face is like an actual moron. That he wanted yeah. to cast Tommy Lee Jones so badly that he bought out Billy D. Williams' yeah. contract. Billy D. signed on for 89 with the knowledge and the clause that he would get to play Two Face if it happened, and then he bought him out. I'm, I I love Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face. He's terrible. I think, that's, I think that is the worst casting decision. Yeah, maybe he's, in a superhero. He movie. is awful. Yeah, and yeah. if he was in there, a good movie, I would hate him. But because yeah, he's in are, this movie, I love him so much. I don't know that you could prove to me that there aren't at least twenty like one second cuts. If Two Face is in the area of just like just showing him going like ah, like just like I laughing, know. just kind yeah. of. Like, ah. I also love like, that he dies because there's too many quarters to catch. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was more like Catwoman than Catwoman. Well, I read was. a I read a trivia that was like this so is the only movie where Batman actively purposefully kills somebody. I'm like, no, he didn't. No he way. He threw quarters and also- at Two Face. <laughs> Far from the only movie where Batman right. actively— no, I know. I've watched Batman shoot a person with a gun yeah. in theaters in the last five years. Yeah, right. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm just saying, like, the, you are stretching to yeah. say that Batman, by the way, who apparently just carries a roll of quarters with him everywhere, but Batman— They're bat quarters. Batman having a whole lot of quarters— <laughs> Sorry, Carter's Carter. Carter's dying. Carter killed, is about to pass away. We killed Carter a little bit. <laughs> Oh, his coffee was dangerous. But Bat- <laughs> Batman throwing quarters and Two Face being like, oh, oh, and then falling to his death my co- is, oh, not, my quarters. is yeah. not murder. Again, I say for the second week in a row, manslaughter at best. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be manslaughter, oh, though, since Two Face is two dudes who speaks in plural like Gollum or Venom? Is he ever, is he ever plural outside of this? Uh, multiple not, personalities. Not that I'm super duper aware of. It's more of really, a, for, definitely not since the long Halloween. This is a little more Gollum. Yeah. Whereas he tends to, I believe, manifest a, a wee bit more Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> Woof. Just the camera shot of him. Like they cut the scene of Batman like having to open up the roll. Yeah, I, exactly. With his gloves that are a little too big. <laughs> like I'm just like breaking it open. It's not the easiest. Every thing time in the world. I fight Two Face, I always carry quarters. <laughs> do you think that? Do you think it was a roll or did he have a pocket of loose quarters? Bat quarters. Where? Huh? Where? Definitely not in on the trunk. Where did he put it in the trunk. Unless, well, I, I was gonna say unless he in his is cheeks between the cheeks. Yep. Like yeah. Yep. <sighs> Uh, Schumacher did say he was going for an anatomical look with the bat and Robin suits, hence the nipples and the oversized uh, Wiimote well, covers there is that are on these suits. Almost, there, I hate that those are called cod pieces, just by the way. Yeah. There is something vaguely, um, not Escher, who's the guy that did like the xenomorph? Um, H.R. Geiger. Geiger. There is something vaguely Geigerish about some of the design choices in this movie. I think the Geigery thing is that that is human anatomy that we're familiar with, stretched in a way that makes us uncomfy. Right. Yeah. It's, because it's, that's it's his uncanny. whole thing with Alien. Yeah. 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 Huh. <sighs> May I super we, pump? Uh, yeah. Yes. I don't like the flavor of this movie. But there is so much of it. And this movie knows exactly what it is. It's volume and, eating. And does that like to, turns it up to 11. This movie is incredibly unapologetic and just shows up and does the wildest things with complete dedication to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't even know if I like that. 
but it's just, it's incredibly commendable. <laughs> just yeah. Great job, Batman Forever. That's my super Mul- pump. Multiple Oscar nominated Batman Forever. Insane. <laughs> This movie is a Costco-sized bag of frozen French fries. It's not that good. Yeah. Amazing. But it yeah. is so much of yeah. that it's thing so that it's like much. it's like I, I mean if I'm going to have if I'm going to have 10 of these or 10 like hot fresh Guys. McDonald's fries, I'm going to take the hot fresh McDonald's fries. But if I'm going to have if I'm just trying to eat until I pop, I'm going to grab this bag of Costco, you know? Absolutely. Like I'm still showing up for these Dungeons and Dragons sessions with this DM because it's freaking wild. Yeah, but I'm yeah. definitely texting there my are. other Dungeons and Dragons friends about yes. how weird it is. You're not going to believe what they did. Like, yeah. the fact that a layer, like a secret layer, just manifests. It just shows up. Like, the Riddler has this massive built tower. And I'm not saying like, yeah. well, it probably would have taken approximately three and a half years to make. It's like, in old Gotham, we're using the old zoo. We're using the old, yeah. like, you're kind of using old pieces of Gotham. And in this one, it's like, they had no idea. Oh, crap. Should Riddler have a place to be? Like, should we have, like, Riddler needs, like, a home base, right? The yeah, Riddle like, We kind of gave Two-Face yeah. one with this old set we used from the Tim Burton movies. But, like, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. I forgot about Battleship until I was right in the middle of it. And yeah. then I remembered everything about Battleship. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> yeah. It's those things, man. I get it's your those super things pump, that make it so wonderful and stupid, right? Yeah, like because this it does feels know like what it, it is. This feels like it could take place in the same universe as Inspector Gadget. <laughs> yeah, what yes. is happening? It's like not. Uh, it's not even trying to claim that it's in the same universe. I don't think as the others. Maybe that's like as eighty nine. In terms of and like forever? the way that we're making it, it has nothing to do with like trying to, in my opinion, capture any feeling. That we had before. Does it was the a presence, complete reset. Does the presence of the same Alfred and the presence of the same rimless circle glasses imply well, that this is exactly the same? It's also the I same think it's Commissioner supposed to Gordon be, through all four yeah, of them. Yeah, that's true. It's Commissioner Gordon and Alfred are the same ones all the way through. Yeah. And Commissioner Gordon is the most useless. Chris O'Donnell's oh, completely. There twice. <laughs> yeah. In the comics, is Commissioner Gordon capable? Oh, big yes. Time. Big time. Absolutely. Big recently, you know, did, recently, in fact, Gordon became Batman after Bruce died for a while. That's amazing. Yeah. Why, why did Why did we make him so dumb? In in because the the current like the the most recent kind of retelling of Batman's first year in in the year one storyline, uh, Commissioner Gordon's whole thing is essentially he is brought over from an another police force and notices how corrupt Gotham PD is and basically takes it upon himself to like clean him out. To fix wow. Gotham PD, yeah. He's like the man. Yeah, Gordon's one of my favorite characters. Yeah. Like I, in I all love, of comics. I and love it, su- it sucks to see him be this. Because this is basically just like like random police commissioner. Like he feels like he's just lifted wholesale from Adam West Batman. He is exactly the police officer outside of Santa Claus's cell in the Santa Claus one. He's like, <laughs> he's like, hold on, that's my donut. That's my donut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It it, it uh, this movie is too cartoon for its own good mixed with too serious for its own good. Like it is too much of every single thing it does. Right, but how did it manage that? You know what I mean? How did it overspend in every category? I that's think the Joel thing that's amazing is to incompetent. Me. I, I do like, want I do want to point out that of the many bad things that happened in 2020, one of the bad things was that Joe Joel Schumacher did chuff the mortal coil. Mm-hmm. He did move on to the great beyond, and so Jordan, you have been trashing the reputation and legacy not as of a someone person. Who has passed I just think us. he's a bad director. Batman Returns, it's Tim Burton's man. Batman, <laughs> Tim Burton's Batman Returns was a two hour long cartoon. Batman Forever is a two hour long. Toy commercial. Yes. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. A great difference between them. Because boy, do I also remember those toys. Yeah. I saw that Batmobile. I was like, yep. I remember bath time. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys caught the the scene where they accidentally yeah. used a different Batmobile. No. When Chris O'Donnell steals the Batmobile and takes it for a joyride, there's a shot of it driving away from the camera where it has two fins on the back up at a 45 degree angle from one another. 
every other shot of the Batmobile in this movie has one it's vertical fin on the Robin back. Batmobile? It's the Batman and Robin Batmobile. That's funny. That's so It's like how funny. in Finding Nemo outside the fish tank, there's a Mr. Incredible comic book because that's the next movie they were going to make. <laughs> I think the team behind this were secret geniuses. Mm. And that's one of the secret differences movie. between me and Jordan. They didn't even know they were geniuses. Yeah. Mm. yeah. They had no idea. Um, I think I think that we are... No, I'll speak for myself. I am, I guess, maybe accidental a little bit spoilers for next week's Batman and Robin episode. The diminishing returns of this particular iteration of Batman so apparent to me watching them this close together oh yeah Mm -hmm. in my mind there wasn't this much of a clear quality drop off same like it wasn't this steep of a drop off but Mm -hmm. oh my goodness like imagine being somebody who loved 89 and then going to see this in theaters right probably would have felt a lot of like somebody who went to go see like Suicide Squad Justice League Dawn of Justice Batman Superman Dawn of Justice the Justice League (laughs) Uh, any of those probably would have felt a lot like that is my guess. Yeah, I guess Warner Brothers done it to me before, huh? Yeah. They just kept going. Like Warner Brothers was like, we're going, and they do this all the time. We're making this movie regardless. I mean, that's a, yes, that's a little fantastic beast, Keaton right? Back. I mean, yes, it would Hobbit, be great if DiCaprio was Robin. That's the plan. Let's get DiCaprio as Robin and Robin Williams as the Riddler. And they're all like, no. They're like, no, now we're out. No, this, because everyone could smell it before… Yeah. Before it happened, that this is not, no one liked the direction that this was going. And so yeah. that's kind of a testament to whether we read the comics or not, people kind of felt like they knew what Batman was supposed to sure. be. A yeah. lot of that has to do with Tim Burton. A lot of that has to do with Batman the Animated Series. I kind of wish we had done two part episode about Batman the Animated oh, Series. Yeah. It's like five Does it feel seasons. like to y'all that it's kind of like Fellaini's Clone Wars? Oh, yeah. Oh, the Star Wars Absolutely. universe? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Filoni also. I don't, you know that's It's my just any, any vowels. You get the F and the L and the N and then just any vowels. It's dealer's choice on the vowels there. I'm just not that good at words. Dave Baloney. <laughs> Dave Baloney, dude. And he's out there with Francis McDermott. Yeah. And Matthew, Timmy, McGon- Timmy Matthew McGonaghy. Tim- Matthew McGonaghy. Timothy Chalamet. I still don't know if I'm doing ever doing that right. Matthew McConaughey. It's a C. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's rate this movie. Yeah, we're done talking about it. (laughs) We're going to rate it using the scientific (laughs) cinema scale, which is perfect and as follows. And it's the same science that the Riddler uses to make his uh, TV thing. The best thing we could ever say about a movie is own it, don't lend it, buy Buy that that poster. poster. The next best thing is buy it. That's followed by rent it and then stream it. And after that is forget it and last, but certainly least worst thing we could ever say about a movie. God hath forsaken, forsaken us. I'm going to stream we, this movie. We cannot sanction his buffoonery. Go ahead. <laughs> we, cannot, we, uh, we cannot sanction buffoonery. I stream this movie because the things that were memorable about it to me were all the things that sold the toys. So they got that right. Yeah. Watching it again, I was like, the, the plot line, like the Riddler's motivations are so ridiculous. And Two Face's motivations are just that Batman tried to save him. <laughs> like it's yeah. just it's 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 uh, it's all just such a big mess. But I would still stream it. I would still watch this with somebody. I was so thankful that uh, I was even more thankful that HBO Max held all this yeah, Batman absolutely. IP uh, so far than any of the other movies. But yeah, this is a stream. Did you guys watch this with your wives? Uh huh. Had they seen these before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jess had not seen any of them. And oh, I, that's like, fun. None of these these first Batmans, and I have Batman embarrassment. I'm like, I promise. Like, I, you know, I love this guy. I promise it's he's not a cool really dude. Like this. He's a cool dude. I promise it's not really like this. Uh, the only way that I will ever watch this again is if we do a series about Jim Carrey. We'll probably call it like carry on my wayward son or something like that, but spell it like his name or just drop that. Like if we do, if we do a Tommy Lee Jones series, I don't have a name for that. Tommy on Uh, my Jones Lee Lee. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Tommy on my Jones Lee Lee. Lee. (laughs) Exactly. Because they're the only reason to watch this movie. This is Carrie at the carriest and Tommy Lee Jones at the least Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah. Carrie turns it up to 11. Tommy Lee turns it down to negative one. Yeah. They're and, like, hey, 
Two Face is supposed to be this, and it's just a cut every time they cut back to him just saying, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah. So <laughs> for that reason, I'm gonna stream this movie because it is the wildest collection of contradictions that I've mm. ever watched until next week. So <laughs> far. <laughs> uh yeah, this movie's a stream for me. It's a low stream. Like as low as a stream can get. It's that it is sniffing. Forget it. I mean, absolutely. It it could it could drag its fingers over the surface of forget it from where it is. But it is going to be a stream for me. Uh, the the saving grace here is just it's so abundantly stupid that I have a hard time holding much against it, other than the like nastiness of it. Someone right. had to in the sound room create the sound of the swooshing of like a of a close up on a butt. Yes. The leather, yeah. the leather rubber, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some costume designer had to make hundreds of bat suits and individually put a left nipple and a right nipple on every single one mm -hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that, Chase so that audiences can be turned on. Yeah. So and still are to this day. Um, and that's really the lasting legacy male nipples. of Joel Schumacher's Batman series is is how revved up and turned on everybody is all the time now because of seeing them sure help tnt pay the bills for like 20 probably years. still is yeah, i bet you could probably true. go find it on sometime this month i, I feel like it kept burger king in business i feel like i remember these being burger king movies you know what i mean you know how there's those kind of movies you're like that would be a mcdonald's toy and it's like mcdonald's ain't touching that one that's a burger king toy <laughs> Ew. That's a good point, but back in the day, I feel like I remember Pokemon being a Burger King toy, and Pokemon was huge. nah. Pokemon's a Mc Pokemon's a McDonald's. Now toy. it is. Now it is. Was it was it Burger King I'm back in the day? Pretty positive that the place you Burger could buy, King, you could pay extra with your Happy Meal to get the big plastic Pokeball with the gold yeah, yeah, plated yeah. Pokemon card inside. Was that Burger I'm King? Pretty sure that was Burger King. I feel like they usually do the stuff that's got a little bit of heat on it. I remember Burger King did Butt Ugly Martians toys yeah. for a while. And I was like, I'm not even allowed to say that word, much less either. watch the show. <laughs> hey, I couldn't either. I would have to be like, Bottom Ugly Martians. <laughs> that's so funny, dude. Butt Ugly Martians. Who, Who's even thought about that? In a Who decade? had that on their bingo card for this episode? That's crazy. I think uh, Burger King might have had Street Sharks. Yeah. Oh, that totally feels. You know I what I mean, though? There's those movies that are sharks. Burger King movies, like 97, 95. What Disney? McDonald's is probably doing a Disney, like Lion King. Do you remember toys or SWAT something. Cats? Yes. Yeah. No. Dude, it had the shreddiest. Yeah. It theme really song. did. Like That's the theme song the literally starts with just. <laughs> Like it's just yeah, so that song stupid. really, really rips. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, to end today's episode, I'd like for each of us to say our name and what part of this movie would have been drastically improved by a SWAT cats esque shred on a guitar. So nineties. And yeah. Carter, you don't need to know what it actually sounds like. Whatever you're thinking, you're correct. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yep. For me, it is when Batman runs out of the fire, um, and it would just. Be the scene where Two Face is like, "I did it! I finally killed him!" And then <laughs> it, it got over to the fire. And just hey, that was a great Tommy Lee. <laughs> and then it just and he's just sprinting with those Val Kilmer pillowy lips. I see. I'm Doge, and I think that we should have placed the SWAT Cats Shred theme song whenever Batman appears on Dr. Chase Meridian's balcony. Oh, good. Yeah. When she mm. wakes up in the middle of the night, and it's just, that's how you know it's it's time for, yeah. for you know what. She's wearing her comforter nighty. Yeah. Um, I'm Carter, and it's like we catch hints of it yeah. as he's revealing he's got the coins in his hand. And then he throws it, and they're going to slow it down just a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll get that last long oh, like man. riff like as it hits Two-Face's hand as he dies. He Who sinks knows? into spikes. He dies because he didn't catch the quarters. Do you think anybody yeah. with legal power would even know if we just played that theme song right I now? I really want to end this episode with the thought SWAT I want to song. so badly. If we get we'll DMCA'd, we'll change it. Let's do it. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. It'll start right here.
Today, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. DirecTV Stream brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package.